Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Westdale Theater. Tonight's special guest on Hamilton's Originals is Ginger St. James. Now welcome your host, Mike McCurley. Hey, hey, hey. All right, thank you kindly. Good to have you all here in the studio audience and you folks at home that are in your PJs and the living room couch. Good to have you all here. Okay, Ginger St. James and Snow Hill Slim, let's take it away with the first song called Country Bumpkin. Country Bumpkin. Ginger St. James, woohoo! Woohoo! Ginger in the house. All right, Country Bumpkin. That's kind of a neat little tune. Now, just to get, you know, set the scene here, I, I know you were raised on a farm, so Country Bumpkin is kind of fitting. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, b between my father's uh, place in Binbrook and, and my mom, like when I was a little bit older, we split it between the city and the country. But yeah, definitely a country girl. The side of my father's side of the family is all, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty country. So. All right. <laughs> we like country around here, right? That's good for you. Now, um, and, and all, what about siblings? You've got some siblings, don't you? So I have two... <laughs> How I like to say, I have a sister and a brother from another mother, and another sister from a different mister. And then Ooh. I came along, ta-da, <laughs> <laughs> a few uh, years later, and we made the whole family. But never, ever do I think of us as, as separated whatsoever. They're my family, they're my siblings, and they're awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, and um, going back to when you were three years old, 
I think, uh, oh, you laugh, but you wait. We got something to show you, oh, people. Oh, no. <laughs> there you are at three, or it's someone impersonating you at three. <laughs> but, uh, and you actually did a little singing, I think. Uh, I see there's a microphone in front of you. And let's, um, we've got a little clip we want to play. This is Ginger St. James at the age of three. The farmer in the jail. Hi, ho, the terrier, the farmer in the jail. Hey. The farmer picks the wife. The farmer picks the wife. Hi, ho, the terrier, the farmer picks the wife. All right, hey, how about it? A little leeway in the rhythm there in that song, but uh, that was uh, <laughs> good. Oh, Let's have some you. more pictures. We got a picture of you taking um, bicycle lessons. Bike that was, lessons. Um, so I spent a lot of time at my uh, nanny and granddad's house. So the farmer that Dell was recorded by my granddad. Um, I wish I still have the microphone from those days, but I used to. Um, I would learn to ride my bike with my streamers and everything in the parking garage at LaSalle Towers in uh, La uh, LaSalle Park in Burlington when I was that yeah. young. Yeah. Bike lessons. Well, and then or falling down and falling. learning not to do that again. I see you, you have training wheels on there. I know. Nice. I could use those when I oh ride. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's piano lessons. <laughs> yes. Uh, where was this? <coughs> you don't remember. This was School? Uh, no, I do. This was located in Stony Creek, and um, it was performed at the Salvation Army. Um, they had a, they just had a large space, and I was with the Conservatory of Music there, and I believe I was completing my grade two in piano. Whoa. And that was my recital, and I had my little cute dress, and, and I, I don't even know what song it was, but it was a very important day for me, for sure. Yeah, playing the piano. And and speaking of those guys, you, you were in the dr drum and bugle corps, weren't you? The That's Salvation Army? Well, no. not through the Salvation Army. I So my first band ever, everybody. <laughs> um, I was in the Ridge Raiders drum and bugle corps. And um, we were a competitive uh, drum and bugle corps. I was about eight years old. And I played the glockenspiel. went to Boston for competition, but we, we had um, secondhand uniforms, and um, we had a big, huge um, just headdress, and it didn't fit me. It would fall down over my face, so for that matter, and probably is, I don't know that's the truth or not. It's probably my mom who's like, that's too big for you. You can't go to Boston. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. But I, yeah, it was fantastic. I played in the drum and bugle corps. It was great. So I, I fell in love with. Drum not only could I play the glockenspiel, but I just just the drum line. I I just loved it. So I've always been a fan of music like that and all kinds of things. Yeah. All kinds. Well, that inspired you, I guess. It did. Now moving on for more lessons, we have um, oh, oh Batgirl, God. Batgirl lessons. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, but moving. You found them all. I don't believe I well, sent you this. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't have, you see. And um, how about singing lessons? Oh. Oh, and boy. And that kind of leads us into the, um, the next song we'd like to uh, let you hear. Uh, this was, now this is, I think you're a little older than 11 in this picture. That, that was a little bit older. But at age 11, you did write your own first song which I can't get out of my head now, and I feel bad about that little fish. It's a song about, well, it's called Poor Little, what's it called? Um, my Poor Fishy. My Poor Fishy. <laughs> Let's hear it. My Poor Fishy. Yeah, my poor fishy. 
It never made the charts, but uh, it was a good song nonetheless. And that would bring us to our next song. Why don't we play uh, another song and redeem ourselves? I would love that. Okay. If it's possible. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play my bass. I would just like to say I have never been able to keep a fish alive <laughs> since 1986. So. <laughs> what is this one? Uh, this one is uh, Low Down Lonesome Blues. Oh, good. Yeah. I feel sad already. I should just say this song um, was written during COVID um, when everybody. Low down, load some blues when you have nobody else around. That's that's maybe how you feel, but. Yeah. Another evening here on Lonely Street, all by myself. Yeah. Some blues. 
I was feeling it, sister. Yeah. It's sad when you have the blues. It's Deep bad. down, you know? Now, what about um, your step dancing days? You were, uh, you know, you, you did a fair bit <laughs> of that. My pardon days? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, okay. Well, moving right along. Um, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> we can talk about it. No, well, you, you did say you, uh, I think when you were younger, you, you figured you'd, you were always going to be an entertainer uh, of some sort. So I guess dancing and music and singing. I mean, you saw your future there, right? Oh, I did. Um, I mean, growing up with uh, the musicals and all that stuff, I, I was huge into cabaret. Uh, the, f the photo that you saw with uh, the Batman symbol, uh, that was my first time on stage with the Steps Dance Corporation, and, I s and, and we performed Batman, um, Prince, like, come on, you know, and we're all in there. That's, that's, that's what I did. But, I, yeah, I was big into dance. I did tap dance. I did uh, jazz. I did hip-hop. I did uh, all kinds of stuff. I, I, I was in gymnastics. I... Yeah. I just, I think my parents didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, she's so hyper. <laughs> yeah. In high school, apparently, they didn't know what to do with you either. <laughs> right? No, well, you were more into alternative music and Nirvana and all that. Oh, completely. Um, yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, kind of the only girl um, in school that uh, played guitar and but but I want to be better than boys you know so they're like oh we just we, we want to learn Radiohead I'm like well I already learned it so <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. yeah I was a bit like that right. and uh, just high school wasn't always uh, fair to me uh, but that's like a, a lot of people so I just found my way to excel in other disciplines nice mm -hmm. well that's good for you well, thank you and you followed a lot of show people like, uh, I know you mentioned Bernadette Peters, uh, Dolly Parton. Uh, upstairs we talked about Mae West. Oh, of course. Is that a gun in your pocket? Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys know that one. Uh, uh, a hard man is good to... That's what um, I said, yeah, hard. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah we we're up there. Did we that one? <laughs> we're, we're trading Mae West quotes upstairs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, really. Uh, what about your musical influences? Mm. There was, for instance. Well, let's see. So musical influences for sure. So going back, like we we had uh, talking about, um, I, I was, you know, treated to uh, musical theater a bunch in 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 uh, like VHS and stuff like that. So there was, I said, Bernadette Peters. There was also like. But you learned about Carol Burnett or, you you know, like, and the Mae West and, and just the women, like Lucille Ball, come on, she's a zinger. Like, all. Respecting them at the same time. And that's an incredible thing to learn when you're five years old. That, yes, you can be in an industry like this where men respect you. Um, because I, I feel like, like I had already, already learned um, at that time of being a woman um, or being a girl or anything like that, that like you're just a girl just the way, like, I mean, looking at people like Natalie Wood as an actress, you know, she started off young as well. And uh, sometimes it's hard to look back on interviews and just the way they were treated or the way their managers treated them of, of just to um, exploit them. Yeah. Um, and then there's other women who are just like, Mae West are going to kick down the door. There's other Lucille Ball going to kick down the door. Carol Burnett kick down the door. <laughs> and so. And you're that kind of gal, I oh, think. Yeah. I'll kick in teeth before I kick down a door. Whoa. Ow. <laughs> I see um, you're wearing uh, cowboy boots and fishnets. <laughs> That's quite a fashion statement. <laughs> You can't yeah. rip them this way, you see? <laughs> they, uh, those are industrial already. fish nuts, I <laughs> They're think. They're industrial. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, let's play another song. How about um, Beer Bottle Pockets? I'd love that. Okay, I'm going to stick with this. I got them beer bottle pockets. 
kids, nothing to lose. A penny for your thoughts in a bottle of booze. I got a beat up guitar, some more for the fives. I got a fist full of sets, a whole lot of jive. A beer bottle pockets and nothing to lose. I got a roasted up high. I got a mean old man in a rocking chair I got a pretty smile in it Pockets are and nothing to Pockets. Now, I also heard that your first band was called the uh, Badass Burlesque Band. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Oh, yeah. How'd you come up with that name, the Badass Burlesque Band? Hey? Well, I was doing burlesque and we needed a band. They still do burlesque? <laughs> okay. No, well, not anymore. Maybe, like other people do. We were called the Steel Town Sirens. I don't know if anybody recalls that, but that was a, a few years ago. Steel Town Sirens. And um, yeah, we wanted to put a band together, and that's just what we called it. It was just the Badass for Less Band. So you know, lots of lots of uh, floor toms, like you know, double kicks, and just boom, 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 the boom, boom, just, boom. Yeah, boom. very much like that. All and right. uh, with some horns, uh, we had a, our, our leader, um, he was a, a saxophone player, uh, but it could also chart everything out, so we also had some horns involved, and I mean, it was it was really cool. If anybody's like ever listened to David Rose, the stripper, um, that's, da, that's da, kind of what da, we, da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh, I never listened to it, but. <laughs> But that would bring along our uh, next photo because you also played at um, this thing called, you can't really see it there, it was called Bands for Boobs. Yeah, Bands for yeah, Boobs. You, you got some explaining to do there, lady. Mm, okay, oh, well. I know, that was for breast cancer, I'm sure, right? Right, um, in uh, 2000, uh, I believe it was established in 2013. Uh, one of my best friends from high school, she uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know else how to help her. Um, I knew she needed money. I knew she needed things taken care of. And so 
we did bands for boobs and I and I contributed the money uh, towards her so she could have her kids looked after and and uh, like she could pay for parking like it's insane you know you want to go to Jervinsky it's like fifteen dollars right yeah. and it's like how can anybody with children so bands for boobs was born this this picture is actually from the second year it it turned into a monster of its own so every year um, except during the pandemic we have done bands for boobs and um, have raised over twenty five thousand um, dollars towards nice. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for the cancer assistance program. So it's it's look out for this. It's like a, it's a marathon, but uh, okay. yeah, but we love boobs, right? Burlesque well, boobs. It all goes together. It goes back to either we're breastfed or you weren't breastfed. But <laughs> either way, you love boobs. I think. Well, sure. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of sex, uh, no. Um, <laughs> but the, the next picture we've got, I believe, is who is that? Teenage head. What's that mean anyway? And there, there's you at the end, uh, you know, playing along. Who's playing in the band there? Well, that would be uh, Cadillac Bill and the Creeping Bands band. And uh, that was, I believe, at the St. Hollywood. And, and I was a guest for that night. And we were celebrating Frankie Venom, oh, um, who is, who's a tremendous icon to us. Um, and always around Hamilton. Frankie Venom, if you don't know, was the lead singer of Teenage Head um, and, and all those fun songs. So uh, I, I think that's what that night was. That was a couple years ago. But uh, yeah, all, all our fun friends in there. All our fun friends in there. Now, I know you've also played with Dave Rave, right? Who's yes. Who's sort of taken over the new revised Teenage Head. Well, yes, of course, yeah, Dave Rave. Uh, Dave Rave does so many jobs. Dave, And who well, doesn't love Dave Rave? you got to love him. And he's going to be here at the Westdale on my show, but not for a few more months. But, yeah, you, if you know Dave, you, you, you couldn't not love him, right? He's such a guy. Uh, and then, you know, sticking with the same theme here, um, the Pistolettes. Let's talk about the Pistolettes. Like, what about that name? I love them. Oh my goodness! It well. <laughs> it's a girl band. Yes. And I mean that. There's I there's four ladies in the band right now. Um, initially, when it started, we were asked to play. It was just a simple thing, like with a pistolet's name hadn't hadn't been born yet, and uh, we uh, were invited to play at I don't know. It was some wing place and. <laughs> and it was going to be Wild Women Wednesdays, you know, and, and uh, Mary Simon and I had never worked together before. And, and uh, w William Schwindemann, who, um, excuse me, runs the Cal Spa, actually was running that place at the time. And he says, hey, do you want to play with Mary Simon? And I said, and I said, all right. And so um, I had a, there was a few names bopping around. And one of the names was the Pistoliers, but the Pistoliers wasn't going to work with with a group of women. So I'm like, hey, you want to be a pistolette? But the thing was, like, we were like, yay, the pistolettes on Wild Women Wednesdays. And they were like, can you turn down, please? <laughs> Damn. I was like, there's nothing wild about this. Anyhow, so so uh, we just we just grew. And uh, Justine Fisher, I'm not sure. She's a super talented woman. Um, she she plays with so many people. Um, also, Linda Dumo, she plays drums with us. So now we're with the pistolettes, and now we... Now we're making some noise and uh, playing all playing all over the place. So uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. But yeah. yeah, it turned out from this very little Wild Girl Wednesdays to Can you please play loud or quieter? Yeah. Damn. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, and let's move on to Cadillac mm. Jack. I know you mentioned um, him a moment ago. Oh, Cadillac mm. Bill. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I said. That's exactly what you said. You people heard that. So of course they did. Cadillac Bill. I've met him. But i got to get him on the show, don't oh, I? Damn right you do. <laughs> yeah, he deserves it. Um, so I have met I met him, I, how about, 15 years ago? Yeah, in the burlesque days. So I was like, da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> nice. da, and he's here, too, and so we've done um, a ton of shows together. Um, he's been 
uh, when we were the Steel Town Sirens and had us perform there. Um, I've done backups, uh, you know, singing with him and everything. And, and he has his own uh, television shows and other productions that he that he does. And it and uh, like basically when like when you're in the Hamilton music business and you, or scene it doesn't even need to be the business, but but you befriend people and you get interested in their projects and and you and you feel there's value to that. You want to you want to be a part of that. Because um, if it's interesting enough, folks like you who are here tonight are going to come and buy a seat and listen to how cool like Hamilton um, is is being created like beyond um, you know ten years ago in the music industry or how how things are growing because everything's changing all the time and it's very hard you know to navigate sometimes to see right. like what's gonna what's gonna go or you could be like i don't care like mostly <laughs> that's how i am i'm like i don't really yeah. you know my mother asked me not to swear today so okay no swearing <laughs> damn well, what about uh, this <laughs> next picture we've got i had to i had to write uh to ginger and say who is this guy he looks familiar but oh Okay, <laughs> Mr. Six Seven, uh, Sleepy Labeef, uh, Rockabilly, legit legend uh, from the East Side of the United States, uh, who had a very long career, um, and I was lucky enough um, to be able to open the show for him, and he was just so lovely. Uh, he passed away not too long ago. Uh, but if you if you did look up about him, he he really is a pioneer of that that genre, um, hmm. and and doesn't even specifically just keep it to rockabilly, but includes um, you know like legit country and all that stuff. And he was nothing but a gentleman, and and it was a thrill. And obviously, like there's like I don't know how, how <laughs> he's very tall. Yeah, he's a big boy. <laughs> Sleepy La Beef. Sleepy La Beef. You can look him up. Yeah, and uh, we're so sorry that he he's gone, but he was extraordinary and a very very nice gentleman. A legend in rockabilly. That's correct. Right? Cool. And look at my hair. What's going on? Yeah, so look I have at the like, look. Like eggplant hair. Then. And the look on your face. <laughs> it's like I love this man. I do <laughs> though. Like, he's oh. my idol. <laughs> That's cute. I just felt so lucky, you know, to yeah. mm, like a little kid. So let's talk about your CDs. You've had a couple come out in the last few years. Mm -hmm. CDs. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, here's one. Ginger St. James and the Grinders. Diesel and Peas. Now, we already did a song. The last song was from that, right? Beer mm -hmm. Bottle Pockets is from that. And uh, I think a couple more that we're doing tonight. Sure. And then we've got uh, the newer album, One for the Money, Two for the Show, Three to Get Ready. <laughs> I think and we just stop at the first line. Yeah. I like your strumming hand. It's like... <laughs> anyway. I don't even know what that was. That, I don't was, know. that was just a picture that it's, day. It's unique. That's all. It's unique. But we're going to be honest here. And on that <laughs> album is a song called um, Merry-Go-Round. Cracks, yes. Correct. Yes. Which I think we should do for the fine folks here tonight. Sure, of course. I'd love to. And how do you like that segue? Questionable. I'll give you my sheet after the show and we'll decide. <laughs> so Mary go round. Um, just for a quick little yes. introduction. Um, so we played on the road for a few years, like back to back to back to back to back. And there was management, and there was labels, and there was pressure, and there was all these things. And um, I did find myself having a brief break, and that's where Merry-Go-Round uh, was born because you just look at the horses, right, at the, at the, on the carousel at, at the Merry-Go-Round, but they're at the other Merry-Go-Round, and that's all they do. They just go round and round, and they look pretty. And they can't stop. Like, that's it. That's all they do. So that's kind of how I felt at that time. And, uh, yeah. So let's call merry go round 
talk about your band members so now would this be the latest band is the grinders well we've been the grinders for probably <laughs> i don't know at least 12 years oh. um, but with um you know changing members and all that so now we've got oh here they are here There's oh the over here oh these oh. guys <laughs> oh that's not right Oh, no, that's totally yeah. right. We love them. Okay. Um, Who are so, they? well, in Toronto, uh, we, we work with uh, Cleve Anderson, who you might remember as being the first drummer for Blue Rodeo. 
Um, so he plays with us. He's a he's a punk rock and awesome guy. And then also um, Mr. John Bora. Um, his project is called the Rattlesnake Choir, and he's been the sound man at the Horseshoe Tavern, as well as a Dakota um, and a f- Garrison, every a bunch of places. Um, so there are solid guys um, in Toronto. Um, I don't necessarily have I, like a set band. Um, I mean, of course, I have the first phone call person, um, but okay, I love to play. I love to be able to play with other people and be accepted with nice. that, and not and so like people aren't aren't offended like oh you didn't have me on this gig. It's like well you weren't weren't available, so we're gonna you know yeah, yeah. you know do this and we're just gonna do it out. And if it works out, like so I I think I I would like to just say I'm pretty I'm a pretty lucky person uh, to be able to do that. Yeah. Now uh, Slim though he's your regular guy, right? Oh, Slimmy and I have played together, I don't there know how many is. years now, like, yeah, about 50. Put the light right on him. He loves that. Yes, yeah, give him the spotlight. He wants it, yes. This is Snow Hill Everybody, Slim, Everybody, this is Snow Hill. <laughs> Snow Hill. Yeah, hey. he can talk about it. Let him. Let yeah, him let's grill hey, Snow Hill. Yeah, like, you're probably wondering, who's this guy sitting on the end? He's, like, amazing on guitar, but we know nothing about him. Now, Snow Hill, let me tell you, I'll start. He comes from Caledonia. Hey, that's close enough to Hamilton, I figure. I love that place. Uh, but how did you come up with the name Snow Hill, Slim? Uh, well, <laughs> well <laughs> it was a pilgrimage that we, uh, Buddy and I took down to uh, uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. And uh, I was jamming down there. And then uh, uh, it was afterwards, there was a old guy in the corner there and he he asked me where I was from he didn't really ask me my name is where are you from and I said Canada and he's like he's like snow hill and then <laughs> like he uh he addressed me as that for the rest of the like, like I was there for a few days so every day like the next day snow hill and like, you know so you know uh I hold I hold that place kind of dear to my heart it's kind of like uh so I figured you know if anyone's gonna throw me a moniker or a nickname then I'll just keep it it could have been Yeah. Clarksdale. Take yeah. the last train to Clark. Yeah. Oh, that was Clarksville. <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay, and did he explain the combination of snow and heel? I, I don't get that. No, he didn't. He just called me that, and uh, okay, I just we're going. It's because he's Canadian. Basically. Yeah, I, I think there's a Canadian we're connection heels? there. Well, and, I get the uh, snow, but what? And I was slim then. Like I was a lot slimmer anyway. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> working on it. We all were slimmer then, I think. And how did you guys meet up? Was it down there in Clarksburg, Mississippi? No. No, we actually live... Um, well, Neighbors? there's a funny line. It, it could be uh, Haldebrook Road, some people will say. Like, I live in uh, <laughs> Haldebrook, Haldebrook Norfolk, and then she lives, like, she grew up in Bimbrook, or lives in Bimbrook, so we were actually only about 10 minutes apart for many, many years, but we didn't know. For 27 years, yeah, and yeah. never knew. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he dated, he, guess what? He dated my first cousin in high school. Whoa. Didn't even know. You see? That's She's a police officer. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Snow Hill Slim on the guitar. He's, he's damn fine. He's damn great. Fine. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. And what about Lou Molinaro? What this, about Lou Molinaro? This Lou. ain't Hollywood. Hey, there he is. Because he was a big influence or a help in your career, I believe, right? What? what? Are you talking to me? Yes, I, I am, you know. Oh, I'm I thought, like, Lou was here and you're oh, asking him. He? Maybe he is. No. no, I don't know. Was I a no, big... I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was an influence or a... a Lou Molinaro, of course, he was a super big supporter. He was um, probably the first radio interview I ever did. Uh, I was in a band with him called uh, Bouchard's Outrageous Canadians. It was a better nine-piece band. Um, and we rehearsed every Tuesday with a ghost drummer just so we could have Albert Bouchard from Blue Oyster Cult um, come in and drum with us. So that's who we did. And, and also sang with, uh, um, oh my goodness, 
Haha, <laughs> what's I can't even why am I blanking? Anyhow, um a few members of Alice Cooper um Whoa. things like that. Yeah, and we got to play on the same stage, like Dennis Dunaway and uh things like that. So it so it was legit. Like we learned all these songs and so it was pretty crazy because Lou's just like, Okay, we're gonna do this. Uh, yeah. You know, he gets so excited, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, and he was one of the first radio shows I was on. But yeah, I got to play in a band with him. That neat. was neat. Yeah. I helped paint the St. Hollywood black. And, oh, yeah. I you know, know, when they were first know. opening it. Yeah, that was cool. Lou Molinaro. Yeah. The St. Hollywood. And what about um, Sean Brush? I wanted to mention him because uh, I think you did a fundraiser for him, was it? Uh, uh, oh, a few times. Actually, I'm, I did that too, but I don't remember. See, my name's on there, but... <laughs> was I there? Um, Sean Brush and I are longtime friends. Uh, how we met, I'd have to, I'd have to really uh, think about that. But yes, so we do fundraisers uh, such as keep Sean rolling, as you you know, as we're, we can see right here, um, and that's just to keep his wheelchair rolling um, because he does depend on. Um, you know, like government assistance and stuff, and it and it's pretty difficult, and so they kind of effed him for over for a bit, and uh, he just made some noise though, and they're like, okay, as soon as you know, you get your friends on board and bring attention to CBC and all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we all love to do. Um, I don't think there's anything better that sits in my soul than to be able to help others or like contribute to something in, in a way that like others might not be able to, like I know I could be able to like raise a chunk of money, you know, and just call my friends and stuff like that where, you know, maybe other situations aren't that way, but that I, I love, I very much do love to contribute to my community. And uh, he's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Sean's a great uh, local musician. Um, we almost had him on the show, but he couldn't quite make it that day. He wasn't feeling right. But he was on the Cable 14 uh, show that we did last summer. Yeah, Sean Brush, an amazing musician and guitarist, even though he's stuck in that little wheelchair. Good man. And last but not least, and I'm going to delve into a bit of a personal thing here. It's just Mark Howard. Uh, Mark Howard, cancer-free, benefit concert. There you are again, you know, helping people out. So Mark worked at Grand Avenue Studio. He came in as a young kid uh, back when I was one of the older kids working there. And uh, he went on to, to great things uh, with the help of Dan Lanois. Um, but then tell us a quick story about Mark and what happened there. <laughs> oh, a quick story. Um, oh, well... Well, I mean, I guess he got cancer. I'm not aware of that. I okay. Well, my but my quick story is oh. like I mean, I can do a quick story. So like quick story. How about this? Totally not to probably what you were thinking. I was um, working at the Casbah at the time. They had no place to rehearse our show. I'm like, come on in. Uh, we're gonna re rehearse here. You know, nobody know who who was, who I was. Um, it was funny, I, a Hollywood star guy is like, oh my goodness, who are you? Meanwhile, then I was in there, like, because <laughs> I couldn't have anything to do at my own job, and like, just like, I had to be there as a monitor, so I, I cleaned the toilets. Oh, that sort of thing, eh? But it's not, it's not a bad thing. Like, I put myself to use, you know what I mean? And then, th and then later on, I went and sang, and it was beautiful, and it was at this big, huge um, church, and it couldn't have been more uh, magic at all. It felt, it was just exceptional. And Mark was there? And Mark was there. Nice, right. I'd like to see him again. I heard he's living back in Ontario, right? Up near Milton or something. That's what we hear. Okay. The legend, the legend of Mark Howard. The rumors. But uh, he's he's a wonderful man, and he's produced tons of things. And we worked together on his book launch, and also uh, did uh, did this uh, benefit concert uh, for him um, in his in his uh, struggle with uh, recovery with melanoma. 
And uh, yeah, it was super fun. I don't know if anybody else was there, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, like, I don't know, seeing people that you admired, maybe like as a teenager, you're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna watch this movie tonight. And like, who knew, you know, 15 years later, you'd be standing beside that person who starred in that movie and you're showing your best friend like, na 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 na. Cool. <laughs> Well, on that fun. note, let's do the uh, boom, boom, room. All right. How about that one? Let's do that. Yeah. I like this. Ooh, you make me feel good from my head to my toes, yeah. Get me so hot, I gotta take off my clothes. Can't take it anymore. I'm gonna explode. You make my panties drop in the spotlight. Go, go, go to my boom, boom room. Yeah, we can ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, oh, and baby, when I'm through, I'll tell you. Count to ten and start again Cause I can't stop loving you Ooh. I'll tease ya, deceive you with my lip I stick a lips and show ya How I like my loving with the move of my hips I'll keep you smiling while you're crying from the shivering feds. Go on and drop your toes and hit the floor. I'm begging for more. My boom boom room. Yeah, so we can ooh ooh ooh. Gonna enjoy it don't need anything Just you and me And a whole bunch of love and baby One, two, three Well, thanks to all you folks for coming to the show tonight. 
and the folks at home that are watching. Um, I got to thank our crew. I mean, I don't have to, but I'd like to because <laughs> because they're so good. Uh, we got the, the techies back there, Mark and Jordana. Mark with the big voice, he introduced us there. He sounds like a radio DJ or something. Uh, Neil Miller, our executive director here at uh, the Westdale, and really the producer of this show. I'm just the talent, you know, we just come up here and play, but it's Neil back there that pulls it all together for us. Yeah, gotta love that guy. Uh, we got the sound crew, uh, Norm Thornton and Sean's here tonight, uh, James on the camera, um, uh, I'm probably maybe forgetting someone, uh, sponsors, we've got, hey, Marie Phillips is here tonight from uh, Next Steps Planning, our biggest, our, one of our biggest sponsors, I love Marie, and um, Judy Marsales Real Estate, Judy's here tonight, right. sitting down there. I also got to mention Judy's uh, sing-along show has reopened after a two-year hiatus. Uh, uh, the the sing-along with Judy Marcells and the Noteworthies, uh, of which I am a Noteworthy. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm the leader of the Noteworthies. Anyway, uh, we're now playing at Pub Fiction uh, on Tuesday nights uh, from 8 to 10. So come on along. It's sort of like live karaoke. You get to sing whatever song you like. and the band tries to back you up with the accent on tries. Uh, Dave Gruggan on the photography here tonight. Dave Gruggan's always here taking nice pictures. Um, we've got um, Clear Cable. Those are the guys who help us get it online because believe me, if you just see all the gear they got back there, it's like tricky getting this out on YouTube and Facebook. It, it's not easy as pie, you know, so. And I also want to mention Insight Foundation for the Arts, because they uh, help us out financially, and the Ontario Trillium Foundation. So thanks to those guys. <laughs> I just got to say, too, um, you know, we are a nonprofit organization here. Uh, we're not like a Cineplex Odeon sort of place. Um, and so we don't really have a big income coming in from showing Spider Man 4 or whatever. So um, if anyone feels like donating, and I hope you all do, <laughs> we could sure use some uh, donations just because uh, it's been a slow time. In the whole pandemic, we were only fully open for, I mean, since before the pandemic, uh, 70 days, I think it is. Uh, so it's been a little tough if you're a movie theater, but we're making it now, having a good time. All right, so that's it for the thank yous. I just want to mention next month we've got Logan Stotts, a uh, great young rocker and writer uh, from the res from uh, oh, down by Caledonia area there. A uh, great guy. He's been here before playing, and uh, I think you're going to love Logan Stats, young guy. Uh, that's on uh, Monday, May the 2nd. You know our show's the first Monday of every month. And I guess that's about it. Thanks again to you guys for making the, the effort to come out and hear us live. I appreciate it. I'm sure you guys do. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. And uh, we're going to do one more of Ginger Songs. This is from uh, the Diesel's, Diesel and Peas record, I think. Oh, yeah. Please. Please, Mr. Driver. The only reason the album was called Diesel and Pea is because... Why? Well, I took the four-wheeler out. You know, I was being slow and cautious, and then I thought I'd take it for a second turn, and suddenly we're, you know, in fifth gear and flip-flops and a cotton skirt, and what do you know it? Something blew up behind me. I'm like, what's that? It was the fender, but while I did that, I also turned the handlebars right into an evergreen tree. I lived at home again at the time. I'm like, Dad, I think you need to go to the hospital. Like, nah, honey. You just need a bag of peas, and we're gonna pour some diesel on it. And that's the eel. How to fix any ailment, maybe, if you're a farmer's daughter. We're gonna speed this up. Whoa, please! Mess dog driver! Would you give a pog a ride? Please, Mr. 
driver Would you give a poor will ride pretty please I've been up thinking in the morning I need to skip on down tonight Well I see there's a greyhound it's full Perhaps a girl can change your mind Well, I see this great hands full, but how the girl can change your mind? Just let me climb a boat, and you'll still make it out on time. I ain't got no fear, but I'm ready to go, cause all you need. Driver, won't you give a poor girl a ride? I've been a thinking till morning, I need a skip on a can change your mind. What do you think of these guys, everybody? Oh yeah, see this greyhound's full, but half a girl can change your mind. I hope so. What do you think about this girl? Just let me climb for and you'll still make it out on time. He said, okay, now baby, you feel you cannot pay well. This driver needs a rider to pass a town well. Please, Mr. Driver, would you give a poor girl a ride? I've been a thinking since morning. Ginger St. James. Snow Hill Slim, Mike McGurley. Yeah, Ginger and Snow Hill Slim. What a guitar player. Thanks a lot for coming out, folks. See you next month. <laughs>